Hi everyone. We're going to just look at where the derivative formula comes from. And you're used to seeing it like um, something like this. Uh, the derivative of f with respect to x. And I'm just going to put, instead of x, I'm going to put respect to time. Um, is the limit as h approaches um, tends to zero or approaches zero um, is f of f of t plus h minus f of t over h and basically, this is the rate of change here. The F part is your quantity or your function. This is with respect to and this is your time. This means limit as h uh, tends to zero or becomes very small. So we'll just put tends to zero, gets really small. Okay. This is your change in value of quantity, the numerator. Alright, this is your new value All right this is your time interval your H if this isn't making sense uh, right now I'll explain it in a minute all right and then you're subtracting your old value so that's just like you're saying uh, uh, you're finding the distance between the two, so you're just subtracting your old value. Okay, and what we're going to talk about is where does this formula come from? Right here. Okay, then when you take the limit, this part, that part is the derivative part. So basically, it comes from your slope. And you all know the slope formula. This is change in x over change in y, or delta x, um, capital D, delta x. It's your slope. And we already know that's y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over, um, oops, I wrote this down wrong. It's, it's y over x, sorry. y over x. So uh, x of 2 minus x of 1. And be before we go any further, I want to show that um, uh, solve for x of 2 here. So I'm just going to look at this part right here. I know change in x equals x of 2 minus x of 1. And I'm going to solve for x of 2, and I'll show you that why in a minute. So if I add x of 1 to both sides, I get x of 1 plus change in x. Okay? So just remember that equals um, x of 2. I'm just adding x of 1 to both sides. Okay. So now you probably have seen this if you're watching this video, the slope of the secant line. All right, and I'm going to rewrite this. Change in y over change in x equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now, you know that when you're doing the secant line, they don't give you the y's. So instead of writing it like that, uh, you have to find the y's. So we have to input uh, x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1. Okay, 
over um, x of 2 minus x of 1. Now we know that x of 2 minus x of 1 equals this. So I'm going to write it again. f of x of 2 minus f of x of 1 over change in x. And I also know from the previous slide that f of x of 2 equals, or x of 2 equals actually x of 1 minus um, change in x or delta x. And then so we have minus f of x of 1 over change in x. Now, since we don't have a 2x of 2 anymore, because I rewrote, uh, sorry, rewrote this part, I'm just going to take off the uh, x of 1 and just put x. So it's uh, minus, it's actually plus, sorry. This was a plus. So x plus change of x minus f of x <coughs> over change in x. So that's where the formula comes through. And what you've probably worked with is instead of delta x here, they just change this to h. And probably to make it less confusing, so we have x plus h minus f of x over h. We're just letting h equal delta x to make it easier. And then for, uh, so that's where this formula comes from, mainly from the slope, from the slope. So, um, and then the derivative just means you take the limit as h tends to small, or you could actually say as delta x um, tends to zero um, of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And actually, on the first slide, my x was actually a t, wasn't it? So it's whatever your independent quantity is. You can change this to t if you want. It just depends on what your uh, the value you're using, and that's all. Thank you, and have a nice day. Bye bye.